Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Writing On Air. Writing On Air is made possible by the generous contributions of KZFR supporters and by Turner Chiropractic, providing chiropractic care for adults and children. Turner Chiropractic treats injuries related to car accidents, headaches, neck and back pain, and other conditions. Turner Chiropractic has been proudly serving the Hmong community for over 12 years, and they're located at 1324 Mangrove Avenue in Chico. You can also reach them by phone at 342-2111. Well, hello, my name is Kevin, and I am here with my co-host, Kylene. Hi, Kevin, how are you? Pretty good. I, uh, I think today is the day after Valentine's Day, I believe. <laughs> it is the day after Valentine's Day. That tells me you probably didn't celebrate much yesterday, did you? I am single and available. <laughs> <laughs> and it, uh, it was glazed over for sure. <laughs> How was yours? Uh, good, actually. I prefer having the day after Valentine's Day mm. um, because all the candy is on sale and I like candy. So I celebrate the day after Valentine's Day more so than Valentine's Day itself. So. I think I like that much yes. more. That'll be my new ritual each yes. year. I'm sure my boyfriend appreciates that too because then he gets <laughs> a lot of candy for me <laughs> for 75% off. Hey, that is love right there. <laughs> yeah, candy is love. Yes, chocolate. Love you. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is Writing On Air. It is a show designed for students, although really anyone can submit, to submit pieces, uh, short stories, uh, flash fiction, poetry, haikus, really anything in the literature realm, um, and have it paired with music and then kind of read and analyzed, uh, or at least like critiqued or talked about and discussed on air. Um, so if you'd like to submit and you like the idea of the show, please contact me at write dot on air at gmail.com and that's right as in like a pen and paper right w-r-i-t-e thank you for that i always air. i always misspell that for some reason <laughs> yes right dot on air at gmail.com if you'd like to submit or have any questions or uh suggestions we we take those as well so today we have three pieces lined up that are uh well love themed primarily i would agree yeah yeah, day after Valentine's Day. We thought that was appropriate. Keep the love going. Chocolates in the air. I yeah. mean, love. The it's the same thing, right? <laughs> same exact thing. Yeah. <laughs> Triggers the same uh, uh, hormones, Endorphins. I believe. Yeah, I believe yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> but anyways, our first piece is by Josh Danzi. He has submitted um, quite a few times, and all of his stuff is brilliant. I don't think. I actually don't think we've had a writer submit yet that I didn't enjoy. The, these people are all brilliant. Yes. Yeah, so this piece is uh, by Josh Danzi. It goes down to UC Riverside. And this is called Art in Rabbit Holes. She lately and always allows herself as a canvas for me to paint my affections. I paint, but I'm not a painter. Work is an escape on her freckled neck. Our dreary mornings become plastic drop cloths. She and I, we, we dance and paint each other until the room is gone. The room is gone and we survey a joyous daybreak and we sit on its lip. In these moments, in these moments, chasing words brings no satisfaction to my hungry heart. In these moments, and always, all I have is her smile, her gracious afternoons and evenings. It is enough to paint a thousand sunsets. Well, that is uh, Josh Danzi, Art and Rabbit Holes. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Uh, lots of really good images there. Um, I love the, what do we have? The freckle part. Uh, work is an escape on her freckled neck. Yes, work is an escape on her freckled neck. Yeah. I love that little line. There's, it says a whole lot in very little. I always like poems that say a lot with very little. I'm a uh, William, William Carlos Williams fan. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah like the wheelbarrow one. Anyway, so oh, when he says something like that, I have this beautiful image of this very uh, soft neck and these delicate freckles. Um, and, and it reminds me of the idea of uh, connecting the dots. Mm. Not that that's what he's doing, but you know, with the body, sometimes we look at little freckles and we just kind of connect the dots with our, with our mind. I thought that was a really good moment. Yeah, and I, I pictured like, this is almost like a story of, of love and escape because he's saying, yeah. 
our dreary mornings become plastic drop cloths. Like it's just a morning that, that's not really going anywhere, but we really pull a lot of out of it because we're both here together. She and I, we dance and paint each other until the room is gone. Like all those mornings and all those things are just, just us two. It all disappears as long as that person's there with me. Yeah, I really like it. Was, it's a really good love poem without saying the word love, if that yes. makes sense. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, there's that one part, sits on the lip. Oh, yes. Sits on its lip right there. Uh, the room is gone and we survey a joyous daybreak and we sit on its lip. There's so much involved in that. There's a subtlety, a sexuality, um, mm. a sweetness. I really like the way uh, this particular poet brings up these images. Um, he Again, we talked to Urim in many of the other times about some poets who use colors and tastes. And this poet doesn't actually use the color and the taste of the senses. It gives us a word and we get to make the image out of it. Yes. And I really love that. I especially drop cloths, you know, those plastic drop cloths. It, it, you can make up so many different images in your own mind what it what that is to you. And he he gives us a chance to what is our love based on the things that he is saying there, you know? Mm -hmm. And I imagine the way he's trying to describe this moment, how are we envisioning it? I don't know. I thought that was a really great way of his uh, ability to talk about his love yeah. without telling us way too much. Just yes. here's a drop cloth. It's plastic. You envision what that looks like. Entirely. Yeah. And uh, the more I was looking at this while I was reading it, um, it's very interesting just to kind of pull back and look at how he structured this. Mm -hmm. um, he starts off with dreary mornings and like daybreak. And at the end, he says it's enough to paint a thousand sunsets. It all kind of coalesces in oh, one picture. Yes. In fact, uh, the poem itself, those of you who cannot see it, it is one whole paragraph. Um, mm -hmm. There's no intentional line breaks or enjambment or um, anything other than just the words themselves. Uh, yeah. So I thought that was a really cool way to structure it. It's all together. Yeah. Well, thank you, Josh. Josh Danzi for submitting. Yes, very good. Yeah, that was uh, that was art in rabbit holes, which oh, I love that title too. It's just this 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 uh, poet is just it's amazing. Thank you for submitting, Josh. Our next piece is by A. E. Kellogg. A. E. Kellogg. I believe she's submitted quite a few before as well. She has, yeah. I think I've mentioned being a fan. Yes, yes. I think at this point we're all fans. I'm a fan of everything that people have <laughs> sent us. So please, I would like you to send your work so that I can be a fan of you too. We're just going <laughs> to plug that every few minutes. Yes, every few minutes. <laughs> Write.onair at gmail.com yeah, so that we can enjoy your work too. It'll be that annoying <laughs> pop-up ad. <laughs> uh, some background on A. E. Kellogg. She goes down to UCLA. Mm -hmm. She lives in Southern California. And this is from her kind of set called... Um, hypothetical abstract a love letter in my native language so there's a few pieces that kind of fit that this category so a e. kellogg i want to put you in a box i want to measure you in yards and eons. I want to label you. I want to own, not you, but the idea of you. I want to deconstruct and reconstruct, analyze and synthesize and finalize. I want to present. I want to be present for you. I want to discover. I want to know. That was A. E. Kellogg. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes line breaks are a little hard to read because you just want to read it all the way through. And I, you, yes. I don't know usually a poet's intention on that. Um, hers is written so well that I want to continue through um, all the writing. Yeah. Uh, reading through all the all those uh, those line breaks. Yeah. Such a good job. I love this. Analyze, synthesize, finalize. Have to compartmentalize. <laughs> right? Yes. Oh, those, those, uh, this, that type of rhyming I sometimes like when it's within uh, poems that rhyme at the end of a poem always really just irk me sometimes. It's yes. too like, <laughs> but she does a great job of including this rhyme and this beat. Analyze, synthesize, finalize. And as you say, compartmentalize. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
it's it's like re-looking at it because she, she doesn't quite understand this. I want to put you in a box. I want to measure you in yards and, and eons. Like I don't I don't get this. And that's that's a really cool point too. Measure you in yards and in eons, and that's E O N S. That's yeah. time. Yep. So I want to measure you in the physical and the non-physical. I don't I don't get this completely. I just I need to label you. I want to own you, but not you. The idea of you. I, she's oh. just she's questioning this because she's not sure what this is. You know, I love the idea of, uh, we do, I think a lot of people do this in relationships where we, oh, I, I want to own, not you, but the idea of you. And how many times have we've seen someone from across the room and we're like, you, everything about you I want. Yes. And it's just this idea. And then we get to meet the person and they don't actually, you know, measure up to that thing we had in our head, but we just want to, you know, reconstruct deconstruct we want to make a thing make it all this thing that i want it to be real yeah right and there's this thing of control that we end up with in uh you and i had talked about before like in love sometimes we don't realize this control we have whether or not just the other person but what we want that person either to do or to be or even who we are and she just does this great job in this poem about that understanding of what it means to be control. Like, I want to present. I want to mm. present this person to all these other people. I want to present myself to all these things. But I also want to be present. And there's a line break right there. I want to be present. And then it goes to, for you, I want to discover. I want to know. Yeah. That's a great change in tone of, I have all these things that I want you to be. And now I'm pulling back and realizing, oh, wait a second. I want you. Yeah. Not what I'm, not my idea. I don't want to, cons- I don't want to do this. I, and she kind of changes everything at the end there. She says, no, I want you specifically. Yep. Yeah. Ah, that line too, you, you mentioned it and I'm glad you did because I wanted to bring it up. It was my <laughs> favorite line. I want to present. I want to be present. Mm-hmm. Oh man. It, that's, that's the tone change right there. It's like, I want to present to you because you're just so amazing and you're all these things that the idea of you, I want to just show you off, but I want to be present for what you are. I want to be rooted in you almost. And then that second part, how you said there's that line break right after to be present for you, that's that's almost a, um, I guess you could say representative of giving that person their own space, their own yeah. line. They have their own meaning. And after that, they have the start of it. They now become the shift of focus. And I want to discover and I want to know. And like you said, that entire attitude change just completely is 100% different after that. Yeah, I think that ends up being what is love, Mm -hmm. just to know, just to discover, not to, you know, to be present. And I think we forget to be present. Yes, it's baffling in the start. We don't get it. It's confusing. And then we try to figure it out. And then there's like the acceptance of, no, this is okay. This is supposed to be like this. And (laughs) I just want to figure it out. And it's like a calm and it relieves the stress once you get to that final I just want to figure you out. Like, let's just be with each other type of thing. Yeah. Ah. Go both ways. Yeah. A.E. Kellogg, this is wonderful. Thank <laughs> you so much. I, I love I love poetry like this because it has to be so concise. And it says so much. It just, ah. it's like looking into a window. And when you look through it, the other side of the window is an entire other world. So there's like this little, <laughs> this little tiny little square window. And then you, you peek through and there's like an entire existence beyond it. That's what I feel like these poems are and really any piece of work. So please submit at write.onair at gmail.com. <laughs> so we can talk about all these things we love about your work. <laughs> yes. I think actually this is a selfish thing for me because I'm probably getting more enjoyment out of reading these stories Agreed. than everyone else. <laughs> Agreed. I love poetry. Well, we have another one by her actually. Uh, what is the title of this next one? This was an actually called uh, Sisterly Advice oh, okay. by the same poet A.E. Kellogg. Well, all right. Let's get right into it. If everyone around you is laughing and you don't know why, laugh along too. They are most definitely laughing at you. The only way to get by in this world is to laugh at you too. If you don't know the meaning of the words to a song, that song is probably about sex, but don't assume it's about sex and don't think about sex, but don't you dare not know about it too smile and nod. The only way to get by in this world is to laugh at you too. If someone says something about your hair or your clothes, laugh in their face. 
turn around and leave. Go home, then do exactly what they said you do, should do, because your shirt likely does look as dumb as they said, and you really are too old for those pigtail braids. Laugh at everything, never be laughed at. Laugh with, turn tears into yawns. Know your bra size, and if you don't know it, know a bra size. Carry enough pads for other girls in your class. And remember exactly what middle school is. You're too old to be kids, too young to be teens, too innocent to be with the high schoolers, the elementary kids too innocent to be with you. They say it won't last forever, but every single bad thing does, so don't throw up in class. And don't be an outcast. And don't ever, ever, ever let anyone laugh at you. The only way to get by in this world is to laugh at you too. Well, that was A.E. Kellogg sisterly advice <laughs> i almost want to say sisterly love <laughs> because yeah. we have a love theme <laughs> it's i mean i think it's the same thing let me uh move this over so i can see it <laughs> we have one page so we have to we have to share this often <laughs> i really enjoy this um when i first read this it just reminds me of an older sister talking to a younger sister who's most likely either going into uh, you know intermediate school or middle school uh, I grew up with intermediate school. People get mad. They're like, it's middle school. So <laughs> they're the same thing. <laughs> I think they're not. There's some difference. I don't know what it is. Anyway, um, and I love this. She, it's almost as if the sister has been through all these things. And let me tell you, they're going to laugh at you, you know, just laugh with them. And my God, I felt like I was back in middle school here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So don't throw up in class. Uh, yeah, you know, that does happen. I've known that as a teacher. I've heard some war stories. So <laughs> it's, stressful. it's stressful being at that age. Probably the one she's talking about. Right. Um, and we can kind of judge the age that she's talking to you because she's saying carry enough pads for the girls in your class. So I'm assuming know your bra size so that things are developing. So I'm, yes. I'm guessing it's like an elementary Middle school. Uh, probably more middle school. Middle I, yeah, based yeah. on, uh, I feel like in middle schools when things start, and I, I mean, right, right. when I was a kid, I don't know how it is now, the younger seem to be getting older a lot quicker. Right. Um, I love the social commentary on this. There's this great part where it says, you know, they're, they're talking about, you know, when someone laughs at you, laugh at their face, mm -hmm. go home, and then do exactly what they said for you to do. <laughs> yes, that sure probably does look dumb on you. Change it, you know, and it's it's just it's a sad reality that that is truly what we end up doing. You know, we try and put on this front, um, at least for me as a female, you know, a front of who I should be and what I need to be and pretend like I don't care and then go home and Pinterest a bunch of stuff to <laughs> right, right. <laughs> be like what everybody tells me to be. Um, so there is kind of the scary part of this where it's like, don't be different, but be different, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. And I like so much about this too, because at the start she says, if everyone around you is laughing and you don't know why, laugh along too. Mm -hmm. And there have been so many times in my life where something has happened towards me, a joke or, or some event and things, people start laughing and I have no clue what's going on. So I laugh and then like the next day it clicks and I'm like, oh, oh, that's exactly what happened. So what she's saying is while this is happening, go with the flow. Just let, let it yeah. be natural. Just kind of get on board with them. And you'll figure it out. The only way to get by in this world is to laugh at you too, because it gives you time to kind of figure out what's, what's going on, what the situation is. Oh yeah. Like don't take yourself too seriously. But what's kind of wild is there's this line where it says laugh along too. They are most definitely laughing at you. Yeah. <laughs> and to me, I'm like, there's kind of a beauty in this line because you know what? They might be laughing at you, but you know what? Just laugh. Just don't take yourself so seriously. And I remember in, middle school being laughed at or whatever. That's just how middle school is. Everybody has to go through that torture. Um, it was kind of weird. It lingered with me when I got older. So when I hear people laughing, I'm like, oh, they're laughing at me. And it's like, well, so what? Just, you know, let it go, laugh with them. And I don't know, there was something about do not take yourself so seriously. Yes. I thought that was kind of a cool like suggestion. And I like the sisterly love that you recommended because this feels like the, the author, the, the person speaking to the other person has obviously been kind of brought down a few pegs because of these things that have gone mm -hmm. on so she's saying like i want you 
to be as best as you can and go as far as you can. So these are the things that I found that were successful. Yeah. Do these things. And it's, it's very, um, the way it's structured is, is, is usually about four or five lines kind of clumped together with a little space. And to me, visually, I see it as there's a lot of information and it's like a breath. And a lot of information, it's like a <laughs> breath because there, there's a lot. She's, she's trying to tell her sister, do all these things quickly. Listen to me, listen to all these things and do this. And there's a lot of information right there. And it, it kind of contradicts itself in some senses and then it doesn't and then it does. It's, it's very <laughs> confusing, which is what middle school is. Uh, totally. And yeah, it, I, I love that. It, even the visual aspect kind of represents it. A lot of it's the fake it till you make it. My favorite's the, if you don't know your bra size, no a bra size. Yes. But the thing is, she doesn't tell her like how you to figure that out, you know? And that's kind of surprising because like yes. when you're a kid, you just kind of guess. You hear a thing and you repeat it, whether yeah. or not you know what it is. So you can yes. imagine some, you know, little eighth grader going, yeah, triple D. And people are going, what? Yeah, what are you talking <laughs> what are you about? What are you talking about? Yeah. Right. So right. it's kind of funny. The sister is giving advice that is kind of sound, but at the same time, not at all. Because it's like, oh, do this. But you do not know until you go through it. So it's a really mm -hmm. sweet kind of, you know, yeah. I don't know. I think I kind of like to bring it back to her first poem, which is yes. about love. Yes. You know, you don't know until you know, and you kind of just have to go through it. Yes. And I think, I don't think those were intended to be, you know, put together at all, but love is, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Love and life. We really don't know how to live either of them. You just kind of got to go through them. <laughs> yes. So this was our last poem. Um, and I wanted to bring it back because this is the this is the part that I really enjoy in this show too. Not that I don't, <laughs> not that I like enjoy ones in different, I, I'm backpedaling, this is bad, but <laughs> I, I really do like when we bring it together kind of at the end because how this was structured, if we pull back a little bit, Josh Danzi, his poem, Art in Rabbit Holes, was about being in love uh, with yes. a person. And then A.E. Kellogg's was about starting that process and trying to figure out how to be in love yes. with a person. And then the different facet there, like those two kind of are on the same very close facets but if you change the gem a little bit um and you look at the last one sisterly advice this is about loving a, like a familial relationship yes. it's family that's that's a different type of love in in a lot of senses so it, it hits a broad spectrum of like being in love and then trying to figure out how to be in love and then being loving to someone who is in your family or is who, clo who is close to you but not in the romantic sense well uh, the sisterly advice to me is how to love yourself you know, we come back to, we have a self love, we have an understanding of love within the self and then a love of somebody else. So I kind of went back there between sisterly and yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's this really beautiful, like understanding of what is love? Like yeah. a lot of you yesterday <laughs> might be <laughs> contemplating what is love, <laughs> Yes. you know, is love selfish? Is love understanding? Is love selfless? There's so much that's involved. And I really love that we got this tier of different levels of love and I think it all comes down to the self love, you know, like to yes. love yourself is to understand yourself. And then you kind of understand how to love somebody else and then appreciate that, you know, the art of it. You know, we, I really love that part of the room is gone and we survey a joyous uh, daybreak. Yeah. And we I slip like that. Slip. Yes. Yes. Right. And so in the end, what is left is what we know. Just those two people. Just those two people. Self, and then even more, all I have is her smile. There's there's two individual things there that are sharing. Yes. So it's like I'm giving this because I'm I'm painting on her and she's letting me paint. Yes. Basically, there's there's it, it all boils down to that root. Even in the sense of like the sisterly advice um, poem, uh, it's it boils down to I went through this myself. Yes. And the best way I can do this is give you what I've rooted myself in, this advice, and give it to you because I love you and I want you to do good in this world. The only way to get by in this world is to laugh at you too, because that's what I had to do. It's, yeah. it's, it's like a gift. So there's like gifts going back and forth and Josh is like, thank you for giving me this. I will give you this. It's, it's, a, it's an ebb and flow. And then with A.E. Kellogg's first one, uh, I want to put you in a box. I want to measure you in yards and eons. And then, but for you, I want to discover. It's an ebb of like, well, I have to figure out myself and like get it all kind of figured out internally. But then no, there's an external part. There's another yes. ebb going back out. Like, no, this has to be open both, both routes. And it's the same with the last one. It's like, there's this internal sisterly advice that I have to give to you, but I have to give it to you in this like dialogue almost. Yeah. Give it to you and let you do with it what you can. Again, no A bra size, but I'm not going to tell you which one to know. You're just going to have to figure that one on your yes, own. Yes. I don't know why that. I just thought that was so charming. It's <laughs> such a very intimate moment. 
And so I love about the sisterly advice is there is this beautiful intimacy and understanding and, you know, just turbulent moment. In fact, I love that sisterly advice, that that space wherever the person is she's talking to is at, to me, always feels like how I feel in love. Yes, yes. <laughs> always in the middle. I don't know if I'm an adult. I don't know if I'm a child. And I feel like I get pulled back and forth. And I am both in relationships. You know, I'm a child that needs love and attention, but I'm the adult who likes to give love and attention. And, yes. you know, it's, it's a great moment. And then I love with Josh is how the person that he is talking about, this love, gives him so much in the realm of something he's obviously passionate about as an art form that he wants to give back. Yes. And this is what I really love about that particular poem is for me as an artist, either writing music or drawing or, you know, writing poetry or stories, I need someone to feed that so I can give that back. Yes. And that's how my love is playing the music or writing that story. And my love would be giving it back to somebody. And I think he sees that like you are the thing that makes me want to be you know, that level yes, of a person. Yes, exactly, exactly. Josh, Josh has a line in here, and it says, she and I, we dance and paint each other until the room is gone. And I want to focus on that dance part, because for me, when I picture two people dancing, you can look at one person, or you can look at the other person and recognize their steps individually, yes. and really look at that and go, wow, I, I'm impressed by that person so much. And then you pull back just a little bit, and you see what's happening with both of them at the same time the whole coalescence of the two there there's like it goes back to what we we're saying that root yes. in each person but the combined is so much better even even in the sisterly advice one it's like i had to dance by myself but now i'm bringing you to the dance <laughs> and i'm showing you the steps well and also that there's that motion of working together someone has to lead at some point mm. you yes, know yes, and yes. you know you got to also go with the music there's a lot that goes in between all of this and i just think all three of these i don't know how we always end up getting them to work <laughs> together this is always sometimes somewhat of a fluke but it's divine inspiration. I it suppose. is. Yes. <laughs> it's just, I think that's what the beauty of art and writing is. There's always something that works together. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, just like the dance. Yay. <laughs> there's always that common underlying thing. Yeah. That goes on. Yeah. I totally agree. That's why we don't do themes here. Bring us what you got yes. and we'll, we'll help you out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It'll work. Well, I think that's, uh, I mean, we could probably go on for hours on these, but, uh, I do have a time slot that I have to stick <laughs> to, unfortunately. Um, so I guess we'll, we'll tie up here. Thank you. Thank you, Josh, for submitting. Thank you, Josh. Thank and you, A.E. Kellogg. Yes. So much. Um, I just, I, I can't express to you guys how much this means to you, to me that you guys submit because you guys are what make this show um, basically what it is. I mean, I get to have fun listening to these pieces and hearing all these things, but you guys are the one who make it <laughs> and all that stuff. Um, did you want to say something? Uh, no, thank you very much. And please, um, for those of you, whether or not you're a student, anybody who's listening, uh, we really do love reading your work. So please just join us on this. Um, you know, there are opportunities for you to read your work in here too, if you'd like to join us. So this is a great community, um, opportunity, and we're just so excited to have this opportunity. We'd really love you to join us. So if yes. you feel so inclined, you know, email us, ask us some questions, check out some of our past episodes and, you know, let us know what you think and, you know, what you'd like to contribute. Yeah, this is this is very open. And I, I tell everyone, like, we are the picture frame and you're the picture. <laughs> if you want to paint something, you want to put something on here, you have an idea, bring it to us. Like, that's that's the whole fun of this is it's a shared creativity. I get to input parts, you get to input parts. And then when it all comes together, there's this amazing hole that's going on. Yes. So if you want to submit, um, the email is write.onair at gmail.com. And again, that's right as in W R I T E. Yeah, thank you, Kathleen. <laughs> on air at gmail.com. Yes. So before we go, writing on air is made possible by the generous contributions of KZFR supporters and by Harrison Daily Write Accountancy Corporation in Chico. Harrison Daily Write provides certified public accountants specializing in accounting and bookkeeping services, auditing, tax preparation and planning, management support, services for nonprofit organizations, and more. To reach Harrison Daily Write, call 895-1209. And as always, I am Kevin with my co-host. Kyleen. <laughs> Thank you, Kyleen. And I hope you guys all have a good night. Yes, and please get some of that nice cheap candy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Have a good night, everyone. Good night.